Now let's see what Autostick ISR does. As I explained, Autos tick ISR runs whenever the kernel tick interrupt happens and uh, when the ISR runs, it will determine uh, which is the next potential task to run on the CPU, isn't it? Okay, that means it will scan all the uh, ready state task and it will find out uh, who has got the highest priority uh, than the currently running task on the CPU, right? Now in this lecture, let's explore through code what exactly uh, tick ISR does. Okay, before that, let's find out in which file the tick ISR is implemented. Let's say you are using a microcontroller which is based on say ARM Cortex M based processor. Okay, so that means your Autos timer is cystic timer, isn't it? So now suppose if your architecture is AVR, okay, then you don't have a cystic timer. In that case, you may be using one of the timer peripheral as the Autos timer, no problem. Okay, for example, if your architecture is based on MSV430, then you will be using uh, one of the peripheral of your MSV430 microcontroller as the uh, OS timer to generate the uh, tick interrupts. So that means the ISR code for ARM Cortex M based microcontroller is different. AVR based microcontroller is different and for MSP430 microcontroller it is different. It depends on the microcontroller and the architecture you are using. So that means the OS tick timer configuration, the ISR implementation codes should be architecture dependent, isn't it? So they are dependent on the architecture on which you are going to run the Priatos kernel. So where do you expect architecture dependent codes? Okay, in the Priatos folder structure, there is something called portable, isn't it? So this is under Priatos source and under that you have all the source codes of the Priatos kernel and there is a folder called portable, right? And inside the portable, you have all the architecture dependent codes okay so now let's find out so now let's go to the priato source code so this is a priato kernel uh, source code let's open this so you will see uh, three folders right so this is a source folder let's get into that and here you this so as you know these are all the source code of your priato kernel and these are the respective header files and this is a portable so let's open that and and you have to know which is the compiler you are using uh so so we, we will be using the gcc compiler so let's get into that and here you can see lots of architectures okay so the portable folder basically contains all the architecture specific codes uh, which is helpful to port the pre to different architectures okay here you can see arm cortex a9 uh, cm4f cm7 cm3 okay and and if you are using avr then then this folder will will, will be having the avr specific architecture codes okay if you are using at mega processor then you'll be having at mega specific architecture dependent codes in this folder and and lpc so it even supports uh, rx100 rx600 from uh, renaissance and uh, it also supports msp430 microblaze so so lots of uh, architecture codes are included in the portable folder okay so in our case uh, since we are using arduino Duo, our microcontroller is cortex m3 okay so let's let's get into the cortex m3 folder here and here you typically see only one file okay so this is a architecture specific code which must be used whenever you want to port the pre to the ARM Cortex M3 based microcontroller. Okay. Great. So now let's open this.
Great. So this is a architecture specific code for the ARM Cortex M3 based microcontroller, what we call as port code or port. And here, let's see where the Cystic ISR is implemented. Okay, here it is, Cystic Handler. So this is the ISR of the OS tick interrupt, okay? So that is generated by the Cystic Timer. Now let's see what this ISR does. First, we disable the interrupt because we don't want anyone to uh, disturb us, okay? while running the OS tick handler and then as I said previously whenever we have a we get a OS tick interrupt we increment the tick count value isn't it so that will be done in this function okay the function name is x task increment tick okay so this is a function which increments your tick count value and scans all the ready state tasks to find out which is the next potential task to run okay and if this function returns true, that means this function has determined already whether the context switching is required or not. So if this function returns true, what does that mean? That means this function has determined whether the context switching is required or not. So if this function returns true, then a contact switch is required. Contact switching is performed in the pend SV interrupt. Okay, not in this interrupt. Okay, so pend the pend SV interrupt. So what this ISR then does is it will just pend the pend SV bit in the pend SV interrupt control register okay so this is a register which is arm specific okay where the corresponding bit will be set to trigger the pend sv exception all right and then it enables the interrupt and exit from the cystic handler so once it exits from the cystic handler the pend sv handler will then run and it will take care of the context switching so so now you may be wondering what is pend sv exception how to trigger it what the pend sv handler does etc so don't worry all these are architecture specific details okay uh, i covered all these details in the section uh, pre rtos arm cortex architecture specific codes so I put this section at the end of this course because it's really too early to explore that and if you are very curious then you can jump right into that section uh, to explore more no problem or you can wait until we reach there. So this slide concludes everything whatever uh, we have learned so far. Okay first cystic interrupt happens the ISR runs disables the interrupts calls task increment tick function okay then we go here it will increment the tick count this is a global variable and checks to see if the new tick value will cause any task to be unblocked okay and uh, calls the application hook function if enabled okay so you will understand application hook function later and returns true if contract switch is required okay so if this function returns true then pend the pend sv otherwise just skip pending the pend sv okay and exit from the isr all right so once it exits if pend sv is pended then pend sv handler will run and it will take care about the contract switching and I request you to go through the source code of this function task increment tick to understand what it really does. All right. So that's about the RTOS tick interrupt, the RTOS tick rate and the RTOS tick ISR.